Welcome to JASP Tutorials. Today I'll show you how to do a Bayesian correlation test using JASP. The first step is to load the data into JASP by going to the File tab, clicking on Computer, then Browse, find your data set. In this case ours is called correlation.csv, double click it, and now we've loaded the data. You can see in the data panel here that we have data for 46 U.S. presidents for which we recorded the values of two variables, height ratio and popular vote. We want to know whether there is a positive correlation between a presidential candidate's relative height compared to their opponent and the share of popular votes they receive. To do the Bayesian correlation test, go up to Regression and click on Bayesian Correlation Pairs from the drop-down menu. Now we're into the Options panel. Let's go through some of the options. The first option is the Hypothesis option. This is where you specify your alternative hypothesis. The default test is a non-directional alternative, but we want to know if there's a positive correlation between our variables, so we'll choose the correlated positively hypothesis. Next is the Bayes factor option. Choosing BF10 means the results will report a Bayes factor in favor of the alternative hypothesis, whereas choosing BF01 will return a Bayes factor in favor of the null hypothesis. We'll leave it at BF10 for now. The next option is the prior option. If you had relevant background knowledge, you could tune this option to incorporate that, but for now we're going to leave it at the default value of 1. Later in the video, we'll check how our choice of prior affects the results. We'll come back to the rest of the options later, but for now let's get on to the analysis. In the results panel to the right, there's an empty table. To populate it, we drag our first variable over from the left box to the right box, and then we drag our second variable over to the second slot in the right box. Let's go over this table. In the table, there are two columns. The R column lists the observed correlation between the two variables, and the BF column lists the Bayes factor. In this case, there is an observed correlation of nearly 0.4 between our two variables, and the associated Bayes factor is about 12.5 in favor of the alternative hypothesis. What this means is that the alternative hypothesis predicts the data 12.5 times better than the null hypothesis. There are many other options for the Bayesian correlation test. Let's go back to the options panel and review them. We can click the scatter plot option to display the relation between the two variables. You can see the relative height of each president on the x-axis and their associated vote share on the y-axis. There is a general upward trend in this scatter plot, which is in line with our observed correlation reported in the table above. Next, let's click the prior and posterior plot option. Here you see the prior distribution is the dashed line and the posterior distribution is the solid line. As you can see, most of the posterior distribution falls between correlation values of 0.1 and 0.6. There are also two dots on this plot, and they represent the height of the curves at the null hypothesis of no correlation. The first dot on the prior distribution is higher than the dot on the posterior distribution. This means that the Bayes factor supports the alternative hypothesis. If the dot on the posterior distribution had been higher than the dot on the prior distribution, then the null hypothesis would have been supported. To show more information on this plot, let's click the Additional Info option. Now you see a graphical representation of the Bayes factor, as well as a 95% credible interval for the correlation. You may remember that we left the prior width at its default value of 1. We had no real reason to choose this prior, and there might have been other reasonable choices. 
That's why it's always a good idea to see how robust our conclusions are to a range of priors we might have chosen. JASP makes it easy to see how the Bayes factor changes for a wide range of prior widths with the Bayes factor robustness check plot option. So let's click that and scroll down. Here you see a range of values for the prior width on the x-axis and the value of the Bayes factor on the y-axis. A Bayes factor above 1 represents evidence in favor of the alternative hypothesis, and a Bayes factor below 1 represents evidence in favor of the null hypothesis. In this case, the Bayes factor doesn't change too much unless the prior width is very small. For most values of the prior width, the Bayes factor is above 10, which, depending on the context, can usually be considered fairly strong evidence. If the qualitative conclusion doesn't change with reasonable variations to the prior width, then we can say our result is fairly robust. Of course, what counts as a reasonable variation depends on the context in which you're testing. For our example, the Bayes factor appears to be quite robust to all but the smallest prior widths. The final option for the Bayesian correlation test is the sequential analysis plot option. Let's scroll down and you can see that the x-axis is the number of data points. On the y-axis, there's the Bayes factor. And on this plot, we track the Bayes factor as it changes after every data point. In this case, the development of the Bayes factor is quite smooth, and it ends up just above 10. And that's all there is to it. This has been a Bayesian correlation test using JASP. Thanks for watching.